please welcome our next uh, speaker, Irina Trang. Hi, everybody. My name is Irina Chong, and I will be talking today about adapting from Spark to Dusk and what to expect. I work for Parsley as a backend engineer, and we process lots of data with Apache Spark and Apache Storm. I also wrote Warfi, which is a CLI for Docker, and I maintain PGCLI. To Dusk or not to Dusk? That is the question. So if you came here to this session, you may be considering this journey and asking yourself a lot of questions such as, is it possible? Is it worth it? What will go wrong? What about performance? I did too. Because how does this make you feel? Executor lost failure container killed by yarn for exceeding memory limits. Can you raise your hand if you have seen this before? Your favorite, right? What about this? It's a Java land null pointer exception. Maybe it's too small to read, but you have like a hundred lines of stack trace there. None of the lines are in your code. What about this one? Executor lost again. There should be a driver stack trace there. There's zero stack trace and, you know, go diagnose it. I know how this made me feel. So when Dusk promised no more Java heap space or container killed by yarn, meaningful stack traces, real time visual feedback, I jumped. If something sounds too good to be true, that usually is. So I came here to help you set realistic expectations. Let's back up. How many people used Spark before for anything? Okay, that's a good number. I'll be quick here. Spark is a general data processing engine, which um, is good for batch processing, stream processing. It has a SQL engine built in. You can run it on a multitude of scheduling backends, such as Hadoop Yarn, EC2, Mesos, and as a standalone cluster. You can write applications in Java, Scala, Python, or R, and run them in Spark. It's developed by Apache Software Foundation. What is Dask? How many people had any uh, business with Dask before? Not that many. So Dask is parallel computing library for analytic computing. You notice there is no general purpose wording here. Dask is built on top of numeric Python ecosystem, also known as NumPy. It's written in Python, C, and Fortran. You can also run on Yarn, EC2, Mesos um, as a local cluster and Kubernetes. You can use other scheduling backends. And actually, you can write your own adapters for them. Uh, Dask is Python only, which is good for us since we're all Python developers here and it was developed by Anaconda Project. So I had this Spark application. The application reads some Parquet data in S3, aggregates, transforms those records, and writes JSON back in S3. That JSON is going to be afterwards um, indexed into Elasticsearch. This is my one input record. Um, I have, in this data, I have customer, URL, refer, session ID, and timestamp. So this data comes from tracking customer's website. The customer places a little snippet of JavaScript on the website, and it sends us pixels. And then we collect a bit of visitor statistics, and the customer gets to see a dashboard, like what content was popular, how many people, how many, um, who was referred by what, did people come from LinkedIn or, or Google, or it's very useful information for a publisher. 
this is my aggregated JSON record. So this is the output I want to get out of this job. Um, it looks like a JSON dict here. I have a couple of special fields such as ID. That's a unique identifier to index things in Elasticsearch. Uh, and then my aggregated record has those metrics, such as page views and visitors, and then a dict of refers, how many people came from which website. So those are the things that I'm going to calculate here. So um, this is a very realistic example of what, of what my company personally does in real life. It's, um, it's like a minimal example. Uh, but I wanted to use a real world example because usually you find a tutorial on Dask and it does like some sums and mins on the data, but that's not the things I'm going to do in my work. I have different requirements. So let's read our input data. Uh, my input data is partitioned on disk. This is parquet. Uh, I used year, month, day, hour, and customer as my partitioning columns, which means this is going to be in that exact directory structure. In each directory, there's going to be one or more parquet files. Parquet files. Um, one parquet file is going to become a partition in a data frame when the data is being read. To read Parquet with Spark, uh, very easy, it's just a one-liner. I'm providing a path here. To read Parquet with Dask, um, I call this DD, read Parquet method. DD is a Dask data frame, uh, providing a file mask. Then I'm dropping my partitioning columns because actually after I have read this data, I don't need them anymore. Now, aggregate and transform. Aggregation. First, I round my timestamps down to an hour because this is the period that I want to aggregate. Then I group by customer URL and this rounded time period. Then I count my statistics. Count everything becomes page views. Count distinct session IDs becomes my unique visitors. And then I have this special function called count values to put my refers into a dict with uh, numbers. How many people came from where? So count values is um, UDAF, which is a user-defined aggregating function. I had to write it in Scala and register it in Spark. So to aggregate with Spark, this is one syntax, how you could do things. You called group by on your data frame, providing a list of grouping columns. Here is where I apply my window function to round time step to one hour. And then I calculate things that I need to calculate, calling those functions from PySpark SQL, count and count distinct, and my special count values function. The second way to write the same thing would be Spark SQL, which is actually the way I prefer because it's so much more readable. Uh, you pretty much just uh, writing your normal SQL statements. Um, so I'm selecting my fields here, uh, applying my counts, and uh, using a group by on those three fields, including the window function. This is how you would register your custom aggregation. So that one count values function, um, I had to write it in Scala, build a jar, and to uh, provide it to my Spark runner and then also register it with my Python code. The first few statements, this is how you would register it to use it in Spark SQL. The second statement, this is how you would register it to use outside of Spark SQL. So I showed you two ways of doing things. At this point, my data frame looks like this. I have all my counts in there and the refers, it's a dict. To aggregate with Dask, um, can you raise your hand if this kind of looks familiar? The syntax, yeah. So you might have seen this before if you worked with Dask or Pandas. Dask uses the exact same syntax as Pandas. So it's gonna look very familiar if you switch in and you worked with Pandas before. First, I'm flooring the timestamp down to one hour. I'm using a group by 
uh, to group on my three fields. And I'm aggregating, providing my, uh, the list of my aggregation functions. Out of those aggregation functions, the two um, count unique and counter are custom aggregations. And this is how you would write a custom aggregation with Dusk. You call the DD aggregation constructor, providing the name of your aggregation, and two function, one of which is a um, chunking function, and the other is the aggregation function. The chunking function is the one that's going to be applied to each partition of your data. The aggregation function is going to be applied to all the results of that to put them together. This is an example of a chunking function, and here I'm using the collection collections counter to create a counter out of my list of refers. And this is the aggregation counter. So it's going to take all those counters, sum them up together, and return the result as a list of items. At this point, uh, here is how the data frame looks. Uh, we're pretty much done with the aggregation step, except one thing. Those columns, as you can see, they have two levels. This is the result of applying aggregations to a pandas data frame, pandas does that too. Um, I want to get rid of those because when I write my data out to JSON, those multiple levels would add another level of hierarchy into my JSON. But I have a certain structure I have to conform to. So this is how I, I would get rid of those multi-level columns. I just say, okay, now my list of columns is flat. To transform things, I take this aggregated record and create a couple of special fields such as ID out of customer URL or timestamp and put my page views and visitors into that dict you saw called metrics and make refers a dict. With Spark, I can also use Spark SQL here. It's quite readable. Um, I format ID, select customer URL timestamp as is, and then reformat my matrix. So those two helpers, format ID and format matrix, are Python functions, user-defined functions. I also had to write them in Python and register in Spark. With a custom function, you can write it in Python or Scala with the custom aggregation function in Spark. You can only write that in Scala. At this point, here is how one record looks. So it's a dict, and we can write it to um, S3 already. Transformation step with Dusk. I take my data frame and I apply this transform one function, and the function body is here. My data is, pan is uh, coming into the function as pandas series. I take the series, create a dict out of it, and basically just reshape my dict as I need to. I'm using those formatting helpers here either. I have to return series again. So one record at this point. Uh, pretty much the same thing here. How do we write it out? To write JSON with Spark, you call data frame write JSON providing a path. To write JSON with Dusk, um, for some reason, um, Dusk data frame doesn't have a method to write things to JSON. Even though you can write things to Parquet, to HDF, to CSV, and multiple formats, but I think it will probably be added at some later point. But to write this data, I had to convert my data frame to bag, which is an unstructured set of records, kind of like Spark RDD. Then I um, dump all my records as strings and write them to text files. Okay, what about performance? I run this on various sizes of data sets. Those are my two biggest data sets. First one is 100 million records, with 2 million records per partition. Spark takes about 3 minutes to uh, get through this data on my MacBook Pro. Uh, Dusk takes about 40 seconds. 
the second data set, the biggest one I generated was one billion records and Spark takes 45 minutes to process that. Dask takes 16 minutes. So um, we can see that at least on the local machine, um, Dask is doing great compared to Spark. We have like three to four times improvement. My benchmarking setup, I tried to make it as even as possible. Those are the settings that I used for executors, uh, for Spark executors, um, the same as for Dask workers. And I also had to run things in a cluster just to make sure, you know, things can be done and also to benchmark things. This is a pretty small cluster in Amazon EMR. It's small as clusters go. Just has two core nodes and one master node. The core nodes have eight gig of memory each and eight V cores. The master has eight V cores and 16 gig of RAM. Uh, with Spark, when I got things on the cluster, um, I get about 12 minutes for my to process my biggest data set of one billion records. With Dusk, I tried a few different setups. First, I tried the yarn scheduler from NIT library, because it seemed like the natural thing to do. Uh, I used four workers uh, per node, each with three cores and five gig of RAM. It's, uh, the runtime is close to 11 minutes here. Then I tried things with Dusk Distributed ske uh, Scheduler from Dusk Distributed Library. I also used four workers. It's pretty much the same runtime, uh, except if I'm doing things this way with workers just running on my core nodes, I'm really not utilizing my master node. I can put an extra Dusk worker on the master node um, and it will give me around nine and a half minutes of runtime. Um, with Spark, I can't do that because my driver program runs on the master node and it's actually quite greedy. Dusk scheduler that runs on the master node is not quite so greedy. This is why I can fit one more worker there. Cluster deployment with Spark. Uh, if you deployed things with Spark in AWS, here is how you would uh, do things. You would create a bootstrap shell script specify that in cluster settings. Then when the cluster is spun up, the bootstrap script creates your uh, VN, installs all the requirements. Then you have to your write your own custom scripts to deploy your code and jars and eggs and whatever it is when you update them to the cluster master. To start a job by hand, you would have to SSH to the master node or you could use some kind of a scheduler or a um, task queue, for example, RQ to schedule job remotely. I have an example of all this setup that I used to benchmark things in my repo here. If you switch into Dusk, the recommended way to deploy things is currently Kubernetes. So your deployment um, process would change completely. First, you need a cluster uh, enabled with Kubernetes in Google Cloud, AWS, or Azure, or the cloud of your choice. Then you would build all, the, all your requirements um, and probably code also into the Docker image. To manage the deployment, specify how many nodes and how much resources to give to each node, uh, you would have to write a Helm chart. Uh, then writing the jobs is pretty much the same. For local development, you can use either Kubernetes in Docker or Minikube. Amazon currently has Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes, also called AKS, in beta preview. I imagine that once that is released, it's going to be much easier to set up a cluster, uh, a Kubernetes-enabled cluster in Amazon, because right now it's quite a process. You can see the example Docker file and the Helm chart in my repo here. Um, you won't be able to actually run things because my repo doesn't contain my AWS credentials, which is what you need to read the data from S3. But if you generate your own data, you can actually run the thing. So how does Dusk compare? Speaking of promises, remember I had those four promises in the beginning? 
No more Java heap space, container kill by yarn, meaningful stack traces, real-time visual feedback. That all checks out. I didn't see a single Java stack trace. I'm quite happy about that. And um, there is a couple things I didn't have much chance to check out, but they seem promising. Profiling tools and diagnostic tools, you don't get much of that with Spark. And the visual feedback is actually my favorite part about the whole thing. Uh, so on the left here, you see the running tasks and you can actually already um, see the bottlenecks from here, what stages take the longest. And if you need to, you can drill down into each worker, into each task and see what's taking much time and what doesn't. On the right, this is the workers panel. You can see in real time how workers are doing on memory and CPU. So the good stuff about Dusk, it's all Python familiar is if you're coming from pandas. It's easy to install with pip and actually if you're using a anaconda distribution it's already in there. When running things locally you up and running immediately you just have to pip install dusk or conda install dusk. Performance looks great. A uh, large subset of pandas I API is included so you can do all your filtering, grouping, joining. Useful daytime index operations are supported, so, so those floor, ceiling, round. Community is growing and developers are responsive. The bad stuff. Uh, Dusk has limited support for complex JSON, or sorry, for complex parquet, which um, I mean hierarchical parquet. So it's like an object within an object. Uh, it's very common for JSON data. When reading the data like that, uh, Dusk can read it, but it will flatten it. So it becomes much less convenient to work with if you have a lot of hierarchy in your input data. Can try JSON, or at least data frame can try JSON, but uh, you can use a workaround for that, and I'm sure it will be added at some later point. Doesn't support as many aggregation functions. Uh, for example, no collect list, nor end unique, those are present in Spark. Uh, more bugs, less documentation and examples. Cluster deployments are kind of work in progress. Um, there has been a few libraries destined to help you deploy things into AWS infrastructure, EC2, Dask EC2, NIT, SCAN, and now the recommended ways to use Kubernetes. So it's hard to keep up as everything is still changing. Pandas or Dask doesn't support SQL. That was a big one for me. It may not be uh, such a big thing for you. The full code. Uh, it took me about 240 lines to write this, and for Spark side, a big chunk of it is that custom aggregation which I had to write in Scala. Scala is quite verbose. You can see the full code in the repo here. I shared my slides, you can see the link, and um, big thanks to Dusk developers for their help. And any questions? <laughs> Um, on your local MacBook, did you ever benchmark the distributed scheduler to understand what the performance hit of that is versus multiprocessing? So this is what I actually used on my local MacBook. I used uh, the Dask distributed scheduler. Um, you will see the runner in my repo. I included it. I was running two workers with two cores each since my MacBook has four cores. Yeah, because if I was comparing the single core you know, Dusk can use multiple cores even on the, or Spark can use multiple cores even on the local machine. That would not be a fair comparison. Hi, I was curious if um, you've dug much more into uh, the joining performance, like, or, or the grouping, like, in your instance, you were doing, uh, the example had lots of simple transforms, but when you get more complex transforms, have you checked the performance or seen like gotchas with Dusk? 
So um, the question was, what was the performance like on the grouping and aggregating functions for Dusk and Spark? Yeah, and potentially joining if you try, though that's bad in most systems. One thing I noticed, um, if you throw a huge, um, a huge amount of data into the aggregating function, Dusk seems to really choke on that. Uh, I was trying, so the, the first thing I tried to write a custom aggregation in Dusk, similar to collect list in, um, in Spark. And if I try to collect a list of like 60,000 items, so Dusk just says, okay, I'm done here. Like the runtime increases 100 times and uh, it doesn't deal well. But if the function is broken into small chunks, it's very fast. You know, if you don't have to collect um, a huge list of items or something like that. Thanks. So one of the, uh, oh, I'm bad at speaking into a microphone. Um, one of the big reasons that like my team tends to go for Spark for a lot of things is the sort of sh data streaming ecosystem that exists within Spark. Is the, you know, sh the, the data streaming ecosystem like one of the top priorities right now for Dask? Because I know Spark kind of has this whole structured streaming paradigm and data streaming. Um, I guess, what is the outlook for that on, for Dask development, you think? Hmm. I'm not a good person to answer this question. I was um, trying uh, Dusk with the intent to replace my badge jobs. Gotcha. So. Okay. Yeah, no thank you. Uh, hi, Irina. First of all, thank you very much for the talk. Um, I had a couple of questions re related to data locality, like like shuffling and stuff like that. Is, are you able to actually control the, the actual data distribution uh, within your sort of partitions across the cluster with Dask or not? Huh, I'm not sure about that because I didn't try to control it. Um, from my understanding of how things work uh, with a distributed scheduler, it's going to create uh, kind of like a random key. Mm -hmm. I know that with Spark, there is a way to con um, control the keys, like you have to, uh, yeah. you can write your own function based on which you partition things. Not sure if that's possible with Dusk. Okay, thank you. Okay.